Welcome back to FY Idaho. I'm Elizabeth Allen Hodge, your host, and my guest today is Mr. Art Thompson, who is the CEO of the John Birch Society. Art is here today uh, as part of a tour that he's doing on his book, the um, excuse me, Exposing Terrorism. I'm looking at my notes here, and one of the things that I wanted to ask you about your book is you talk about a triangle. Yes. Tell us a bit about that, inside the terror triangle. Well, it, I have to kind of explain a little bit before I get to that point. Oh, good. Um, see, the, the thing is that terrorism is almost always organized. It is not a lone gunman, it is not a lone bomber, and that sort of thing. That's very rare. Uh, the John Birch Society, through our research department and investigative reporters over the years, particularly in the latter part of the 20th century, did a lot, did a lot of investigation over the assassination or assassination attempts of various presidential candidates. Uh, like Kennedy and Robert Kennedy and uh, Wallace and so on and so forth. And we discovered that there was organization behind all of these things, but it never got out into the mass media. This lone gunman who makes a diary uh, and he's a loner sitting in a bedroom going out of his mind writing in a diary is the image that is out there, but that is not really, really the reality. The reality is it's organization behind it. Likewise, the terrorism that we see has vast organization. Uh, we see daily attacks from uh, North Africa, Central Africa, across the entire globe, about a quarter of the globe all the way over to, to uh, the Philippines, through mm -hmm. the Islamic world, down through Indonesia into the Philippines, every day, sometimes more than once a day. That takes a huge organization. And so what I'm trying to point out is that this organization is too large to be a ragtag outfit run from some cave in Afghanistan where the guy comes out once in a while when the American satellite goes over <laughs> and gets on his blueberry or blackberry or whatever it is, <laughs> chocolate. Sure, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't compute, Right. you see. So uh, uh, what I am saying in my uh, talk is that this is state-sponsored. The chairman of the John Birch Society some years ago was a man by the, by the name of Lawrence P. McDonald. Uh, he was a, a distant relative of Patton. That's what the P stands for, Patton. Hmm. He was in Congress, and he was on the Armed Forces Committee, very much involved in investigating terrorism. He was able to put together an organization of generals, congressmen, experts from around the world into an organization called Western Goals. Uh, this organization was able to establish and document the fact that there was no such thing as independent terrorism. It was all state-sponsored, and the sponsoring state was Moscow. Now, the way they made that work was that Moscow would be the coordinating factor through the KGB. Then they would go to a surrogate state, such as Bulgaria, for instance, and get that secret police to form another organization in a third country, a terrorist group, then that terrorist group would work in a fourth country to perform those terrorist acts, thereby creating levels of deniability where Moscow could appear to be cooperating on the international scene but actually running the whole terrorist network. That's precisely what they did when they tried to eliminate John Paul II, the Pope. Mm -hmm. Recall that. The, the KGB ran an operation through the Bulgarian secret police into this terrorist group in Turkey, and then out of that terrorist group in a Muslim country, they formed this assassination squad to try and take out the Pope. Now, if that assassin had not been captured, then they would not have led back to Moscow through the investigation that, that occurred. What happens usually when, when they perform acts like that is that if the person is not killed in the act, they usually get to them and kill them themselves to be able to stop that investigation going up the rungs of the ladder to headquarters. So that the real uh, perpetuators of this, these terrorist acts are never discovered. Now, having said that, what has happened over the ensuing years is that this apparatus has been working diligently to cloak the fact that this same terrorist organization run out of Moscow, still is in existence. 
And what they are doing is, is adding another layer of deniability to it because they got most of their terrorist leaders to become Muslim. Okay. So the, the situation is this. Uh, the Muslim countries that border, uh, are, that run across the, the east and west border Russia. So they've been able to infiltrate into those Muslim countries for years and years and years. Uh, this went back to when they were even fighting the British, uh, building the uh, British Empire along their border. Mm -hmm. It was called the Great Game. And uh, the Russian Tsarist government infiltrated into those areas and started to build an intelligence network. The Bolsheviks, when they came to power, took that over and then started to build terrorist organizations within these countries. And so they have had a lot of years, you know, literally 90 years to build this up. And so what they have done in these layers of deniability is to add a huge layer, and that is to make it appear as, the, as if the old communist terrorist network is now all Islam. When it is not Islam, it reaches straight back to Moscow. Whoa. Well, when we come back, we'll be talking more with Art Thompson and Exposing Terrorism.